Today we are back with another episode of The Brave Plug. We are joined by Luzzy and soon to be Dr. Palesa. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies, thank you so much for joining us. Today we are speaking on bravery in academic studies. Thank you for being here. Thank you oh, so it's much. An honor. Yeah, so I think um, if we could start, just some background on what you guys are studying, what year are you in, how's it been so far? Um, Loazi, if we could start with you. Okay. Um, I'm studying a Bachelor of Science in Biomedicine, I'm studying at Edgevos. Sure. I'm a first year. Okay. Okay, now. I can say it's been quite a tough year. Um, it has really challenged me mm. um, in terms of academia and as well you know, managing my time, my personal life. It's been really tough, but I can say by the grace of God, I'm still here. Amen. Still standing, yeah. yeah. Awesome. Um, I'm currently in my first year of PhD okay. um, uh, at the University of the Free State. Uh, it's in genetics, but it's specializing in molecular biology and bioinformatics. Mm. And so far, it's been good, uh, waiting for the challenges to catch up. Mm. Yeah. Okay, can you break, give us a breakdown of what you meant by your title? <laughs> those, are, those are big words. <laughs> those are big words. <laughs> wow, this question is always difficult because yeah. I don't know how to break it down. Okay. But maybe if I can start from the beginning. So I did a BSc in genetics and zoology. Okay. And then I did an honors and master's in genetics. So what happened during my master's um, degree is I had to use a lot of computer science, basically. Yeah. And the term that we use for the combination of computer science and genetics is bioinformatics. Okay. Yeah. So now uh, molecular biology is just genetics it's in the lab, lab techniques like PCR, like really tiny, tiny, tiny mm. molecular level to the cell level. Mm. And that's basically it. So it's molecular biology, you're in mm. the lab, and bioinformatics, you're on the computer doing, analyzing what you did in the lab. Okay, now I understand. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I understand. <laughs> So, ladies, can you tell us a little bit about uh, how you maintained focus? You both are actually in first years, but in completely different worlds, right? Yeah. Um, so, how do you maintain focus? As you spoke about uh, social life, I know that people sometimes say that there is no social, social life. life. Yeah. The moment you enter, or the moment you enroll it's into rap, something. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, tell us about uh, how are you maintaining your life and. Um, you know, how are you maintaining focus? Yeah, so um, in the beginning, it was difficult to find that balance mm. of having a personal life and your academics as well. Um, but one thing I've found of maintaining focus is setting my goals. Yeah. Um, it makes it a lot easier mm. for me to set the short-term goals that achieve the long-term goals. Yeah. Mm. So when we sit and we focus on one thing that we need to take off the list, it makes it a lot easier to complete that list. Mm. Um, but I also live by one verse in Proverbs 21, verse 5, and it tells us that when we're planning, it makes us wise. Yeah. yeah. So that planning, and it, it helps me maintain my focus mm. because at the end, I'm going to reach the end of my plan. Mm. I'm going to reach my goal. Mm. And with the grace of God, I can say I'm reaching my goals. Yeah, yeah. that's yeah. beautiful. Awesome. Yeah. yeah. Uh, for me, it was a little bit different. So at the beginning um, of a degree or a task or whatever, yeah. it's always easy to focus because you're still excited. Yeah. But once the frustrations and the distractions now Creeping. come in, yeah. uh, it, it, it's almost impossible but I like the story of Mary, the mother of Jesus, mm. where if you look at her life, she faced so many challenge, personal challenges um, throughout her life. And mm. it got worse when she had to now give birth and support Jesus through his ministry mm. up until his crucifixion. But she was so steadfast in the 
promises of God and God's ultimate plan that she focused just on being a mother to him instead of trying to don't go there this is going to happen yeah mm-hmm. you know so she basically proved that you are able to remain focused during the frustrations and mm-hmm. during the um the distractions mm-hmm. and it's also important to manage your time well yeah i know this is universal yeah. um yeah. organize plan manage and when you do plan stick to the plan mm-hmm. well, not only will you thank yourself later for it you'll feel as if you've achieved something and that will give you a more push you know yeah. more motivation to, mm-hmm. to now stay it. focused and still be you know mm-hmm. engaged mm-hmm. so yeah. yeah and i think in varsity obviously you can face um distractions um peer pressure and so forth so how is taking on these challenges what is it like how do you cope with it um mm-hmm. especially even with failure i mean that can also creep in you know um not not necessarily in your marks but just failure in general um mm-hmm. how does that how does that play in in your uni life um honestly when i look at challenge uh challenging tasks mm-hmm. um i know that it needs me to have some kind of prior knowledge or skill mm-hmm. um for me to face a new situation that i'm in mm-hmm. um sometimes we look at these tasks and they like okay that's just hard yeah. i actually want to do this <laughs> yeah um it's I overwhelming see my, yeah it's yeah. Just extremely overwhelming mm-hmm. Um but sometimes it's important for us to remember that we are capable mm. of achieving the mm. task of getting sure. through the challenge. Yeah. Mm. But sometimes we also need a greater challenge. Mm. That's you know, so it needs true. to be tougher. Yeah. Um taking on new subjects or, you know, new courses, new modules, something that will help us build our problem solving skills, critical mm. thinking skills. Um they also help us build perseverance as well mm-hmm. and our endurance mm-hmm. because um galatians 6 verse 9 it tells us that we reap what we sow yeah mm-hmm. so when you choose those tougher subjects when you choose that harder module mm-hmm. you push yourself outside your comfort zone yeah so you'll end up learning how to persevere and commit mm-hmm. to the difficult subjects mm-hmm. and in the end you also end up with new experience new yes. growth yeah mm-hmm. yeah so how did you ladies kind of um i mean you were pursuing great things right so yeah. you were being brave out there um and showing up i guess for yourselves but also for the glory of god right so how did you then kind of overcome self doubt whenever it would come because i know that the enemy can sometimes whisper to us and tell us maybe that maybe you're not the best candidate for this or yeah. whatever the case may be so how do you kind of still continue to believe in your own capacity whilst you are in a place where you're dealing with complex matters and 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 yeah. you're solving for something Okay. Um so self doubt in academia is actually a big thing and yeah. it's often overlooked completely. That's mm-hmm. true. And I'll tell you a story. So during my master's degree, um my supervisor would send me to seminars and workshops and it would be a room full of experts and established scientists. I'll probably be the youngest and only master's student there. and during the breaks would be mingling and they'll ask you so what are you doing and i'll be like instead of saying i'm wrapping up my master's degree i would say i'm about to start my phd okay you know yeah. i i felt i have to overcompensate for my self doubt mm. and hide that i'm this little person in this big room mm. and it hit me at some point that If this person is sending me into these rooms knowing what they're like, there must be something that he sees in me that I'm not seeing. Mm. And I can't help but resonate to the story of the woman at the well when Jesus asked her for water and she she was in disbelief. She said, "How can you ask me for water?" Yeah. And that reflected her 
feelings of unworthiness, you know, her mm. self-doubt. Yeah. But at the end of their encounter, she found a new sense of belonging, a new sense of worthiness. Yes. And with my experience having been that person, I always feel like mm. I want to, as I grow academically, be you know, a pillar for those who feel like they don't belong. Mm. And uh, it, it, it's tough being in that doubting yourself. And sometimes you just need that one person to believe in you so immensely that you start questioning why you're doubting yourself. Sure, sure. Yeah. Wow, that's good. So self-doubt, we all deal with it. Um, it just takes that it comes from within to say, you know what, I'm here for a reason. God wouldn't have let me be here if I didn't belong yeah, here. Exactly. So I'll just let him work through me and just continue to show his glory and his grace. Mm. Sure. Yeah. Amen. And I think if we can go to a more practical um, route now, what practical tips would you give students out there, you know, that's maybe, um, like we said, facing challenges, um, failing, how would you help them um, or give them tips on how to overcome? Mm. Um, so the first one I would say is not comparing ourselves to others. Yeah. I find that when you're in a class, and you're sitting with peers around you and you're like, oh, this person you know, has achieved greater mm. yeah. than I have. Mm. Look at my achievement. You tend to look down on your own achievements. Sure, mm. yeah. Um, so that's when self-doubt keeps in. So I would say rather focus on yourself, focus on the goals that you set, mm. and you'll see that you're actually achieving mm. your own milestones. Mm. That's good. Another one is trusting that you have studied to the best of your abilities mm. um, with the help of the Holy Spirit, obviously. Yeah. Um, because with his grace, with him, you receive his wisdom as well. Yeah. And you are able to understand those complex questions and topics. Mm. As well as reaching out to your peers as well. It doesn't have to be strictly, you know, an educator yeah. or somebody above that. Yeah. It can be someone who you relate to day to day. Yeah. Maybe they understand what you don't understand and it's mm. easier for them to explain to you. Mm. Yeah. That's good, yeah. Mm. Yeah, I like that. It's it's very practical, right? Yeah. Um, I remember I've always heard Pastor G speak about this this topic or this concept of failing forward. Yeah. Um, that even I guess when even if in our state of mind when we believe that we haven't reached a certain place, or even if we just meet failure in yeah. our journey, we can always kind of succeed yes. in saying, okay, what did I learn from this? Yes, um, yeah. And I guess even in an environment where you have the opportunity to learn from people around you, we can always ask ourselves the same thing of like, okay, what can, what might I learn from the next person yeah. um, in their achievement? You know, how, mm. what is different in the way that they deal things and, and what can I learn? And once you've learned it, you can ask yourself again, can I take this for myself? Or yeah. Should I just leave it to them? <laughs> you know, so that's good, yeah. Yeah. Um, I just wanted to say that with challenges, um, mm. I have the simplest but most effective and efficient method. Okay. So when you get overwhelmed, you feel it, right? Yeah. yeah. So what you have to do is take a breath. Mm -hmm. And this is going to sound cliche, but yeah. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Not only are you affirming and confirming that I can do this, mm. but you're also inviting God's strength to come and help you do sure. whatever yeah. that is. Mm. So it becomes a much smaller problem mm. and it becomes simpler to complete or achieve that goal. Mm. Yeah. That's awesome. And uh, yeah, ladies, is there any um, words of encouragement or any last words you want to say? Um, I would say to all those girlies who want to also join us in STEM yeah. or whatever academic um, course they go into is stick with it. Yeah, It's tough in the beginning. It's going to test you. You're going to feel like you're not good enough. You shouldn't be where you are. 
just know that God is with you. There's a reason why mm. you are where you are. Yeah. He wouldn't have put you in a position to excel if he didn't know you couldn't do it. Your capability, mm. yeah. So it's a thing of putting faith in God because as soon as you don't have faith in the Lord, you doubt immensely. Mm. And that leads to self-doubt, you know, thinking yeah. that you're not good enough to be there. Um, another verse they can read is Matthew 21, verse 21. Mm. Yeah. If you have faith and don't doubt, you can do the impossible. Yes. Mm. So I would say stick with it. It's only tough in the beginning. It gets easier afterwards. Yeah. Mm. Um, to those same girlies you're talking to. <laughs> <laughs> Academia is overwhelming. Yeah. But if I did it married with a child full time and completed it on time, you For can sure. definitely yeah. do it as well. Yeah, And I speak specifically to my girlies in the communities where there are no tangible examples. Mm. I do hope that I become that for them mm. to say, she did it, I can do it too. And that's, mm. for me, that's the most important um, reason that uh, keeps me going. Mm. To say there's a young boy or a young girl somewhere watching and waiting for me to fail so that the older generations can say, I told you so, that doesn't work, you know. Mm. So I'm trying to break these barriers so that they don't have to. Mm. Wow, we're breaking generational things. Yes, and well, you do yeah, have a social yeah. life. <laughs> you yeah. just reach no, out. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> I wish worried. to get this. <laughs> you do. You wish to get this. Yeah, you to get get this. It's not that bad. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Thank you, ladies, uh, for being brave in academia yeah. and for being examples. Mm. Definitely, people are going to watch you and yeah. they're seeing you today sharing about the challenges, but they know that one day they'll succeed. Yeah. Yeah. So thank you, ladies, and may God. Be your grace and be your fortitude. Thank you for Thank having you us. Thank you for having us. Keep thriving, ladies. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs>